Good day everyone, Complaining Gamer here. I'm borderline technologically retarded. However, my short term memory allows me to retain information just long enough to explain it to then be forgotten forever. Today, I'm going to explain anisotropic filtering versus LOD bias and the effect it has on your gaming experience. If your first reaction is, uh, what? Then perfect, let's do this. The structure here will be very simple. We're going to start with definitions, then move on to examples, then implementation. We're only going to dive into the basics to keep this as easy to understand as possible. In 3D computer graphics, anisotropic filtering, also known as AF, is a method of enhancing the image quality of surface textures that are at oblique viewing angles with respect to the camera. AF does not filter the same in every direction. Anisotropic filtering eliminates aliasing effects by reducing blur and preserving details at extreme viewing angles. This information was taken and simplified directly from the Wikipedia page. With it comes an image showing the effects of trilinear and anisotropic filtering on a brick road texture. As you can see, the anisotropic filter is capable of producing a much crisper texture, especially across a distance if you look into the background but it also seems to have an effect on the foreground. This brick road was the inspiration for my test location, which will be the Bridge of Hylia. For these tests, I'll be using the anisotropic filtering setting found within the NVIDIA control panel to alter the textures within Simu. We will go from AF off all the way up to 16 times, which is the maximum. If I've lost you in any way, let me clarify, we are simply looking for greater texture, crispness and detail. Starting with AF off, we are going to swap between a mixture of still images and video because I believe that clarity is captured best in a picture. Anisotropic filtering in the NVIDIA control panel comes in a few different flavors. Off, 2, 4, 8 and 16 times. Focusing purely on visuals, this in-game image was achieved by using specific graphic packs within the Simu emulator playing Zelda Breath of the Wild. The graphic packs used are a resolution of 1440 with high res shadows and the Bros clarity preset. It should be noted that one of the easiest and quickest ways of increasing image definition is by using a higher resolution graphic pack. Here we are looking over the bridge of Hylia and the image quality is perfectly acceptable. However, if you look into the far distance at this specific angle, you can see that there is no definition, especially when we zoom in. Swapping over to 16 times anisotropic filtering, you can see quite a difference in texture crispness. A potential side effect of using AF times 16 is that it may take a hit on your performance. However, when using my monitoring software, I actually noticed no effect on my GPU or CPU. Naturally, there is no guarantee for the demands it will have on your specific hardware. Let's do the same test using a nighttime setting accounting for some shifts in moonlight. We should expect to see the same result as in the day where the texture is crisper, and indeed we do. To clarify, the Nvidia driver and GPU in use here is 388.71 with a GTX 1050 Ti. The default anisotropic filter setting on my system in NVIDIA control panel is times 8 So let's take a look at that in comparison to times 16 Here, the difference is greatly reduced when compared to having anisotropic filtering turned off, and I would argue almost negligible in this particular scenario. In this side-by-side -side comparison, we have slightly different times of day. It should be noted that this filter has the potential to improve many of the elements around you. I was able to achieve quite a stunning level of detail and crispness using a variety of different settings. 16 times AF within Breath of the Wild in Simu does come with a known issue, and that is that it can introduce a black line across the screen. The easiest way to fix this is by enabling high res shadows. I found this issue particularly hard to highlight when using a resolution of 1440, so I lowered the resolution and exaggerated the image. Once again, the solution for the black line problem when using 16x AF is to simply turn on high res shadows. Alternatively, use 8x anisotropic filtering. If testing anisotropic filtering is something that you would be interested in, and assuming you have an NVIDIA GPU, of course I'm sure AMD have their own control panel, go over to your desktop and right click 
then go down to NVIDIA control panel. Once open, select program settings. From the drop down program select, choose Simu or if necessary, add the EXE if you cannot find it. Once you have found Simu, go down to anisotropic filtering and select 16 times. Once you select 16, then click apply. Open Simu and before loading Breath of the Wild, go to options, graphic packs and turn on high resolution shadows. Now remember, any change that you make in the NVIDIA control panel will require a program restart. The level of detail bias, LOD bias for short, controls at which distance from the viewer the switch to lower resolution MIP maps takes place. Simply put, it affects the point at which textures look sharp. The standard value of the LOD bias is 0.0. .0. Lowering it below zero moves the mipmap levels farther away, resulting in seemingly sharper textures. If the scene is moving, the textures start to shimmer. Some games force a negative LOD bias. The result is heavy texture shimmering. To avoid this, the driver can clamp the LOD bias to zero. That means that the LOD bias can still be raised above zero, but it cannot be set lower than zero. To eliminate shimmering, you can increase the LOD bias, but this will cause textures to lose details in a shorter distance from the player. If you want detailed textures at all costs, and if you don't mind texture shimmering, you can reduce the LOD bias to a negative number. The reason why my attention has been drawn to LOD bias in Simu is because of a new graphic pack texture rule in Simu 1.11.3, which gives us the option of playing with the LOD bias from minus 16 all the way up to plus 16. If you're still a little bit confused, I'm going to demonstrate what changing the values of the LOD bias does. We're going to use the vista of the Great Plateau to show the impact LOD bias has on the graphics. We'll start with a neutral value of zero and then work our way around the classic increments that you see typically associated with LOD bias of plus one, plus two, plus three, minus one, minus two, minus three, and then we can also go to the two possible extremes of plus 16 and minus 16. Using an on-screen display provided by MSI Afterburner and Rivertuner, we'll also be able to monitor if these changes have any impact on our performance. As demonstrated here, increasing the LOD bias value leads to a lower resolution and level of detail in objects. The image you're looking at includes every stage of the tests you were just shown. In my opinion, increasing the bias clearly has a much larger difference than decreasing it, even when texture filtering negative LOD bias is set to allow in the NVIDIA control panel. Here, of course, I was using the new graphic pack texture rule in CMU 1.11.3 to adjust the bias. Now, changing things like anisotropic filtering and LOD bias is nothing new in gaming. And before we had this graphic pack option, people would adjust it using the NVIDIA profile inspector. So not totally convinced by our minus one, two and three results. I wanted to see what NVIDIA profile inspector gives us with a value of minus three and plus three just to compare it to what the graphic pack option gives. As you can see at the top of your screen, changing the LOD bias value had no obvious immediate impact on system performance. Next up, I tested an LOD bias value of plus three and minus three, comparing the difference between plus three and minus three using graphic packs and using the NVIDIA profile inspector. The result was quite surprising. I expected to see nearly identical images. However, plus three in NVIDIA Profile Inspector is clearly slightly more extreme than plus three using graphic packs. 
Moving over to the negative opposite value of minus 3, we once again have quite a compelling image. But let me remind you, we need to be careful about a few things. And that can be the direction of the light and the shadows it casts versus contrast. But I would potentially argue that the tree does look a degree crisper when using NVIDIA Profile Inspector and an LOD bias value of minus 3. Something I would like to point out is that if you are using a color graded graphic pack such as Clarity, the preset that you choose can really have an impact on how clear textures and images look. For example, in my opinion, a more saturated image which almost looks a bit cartoony seems to lose detail, whereas if you go for more of a filmic preset like the one that I personally use, it seems to add an illusion of detail due to the depth that contrast gives. Let me share with you some minus 3 LOD bias gameplay provided by NVIDIA Profile Inspector. One of the downsides that people claim can be associated with a negative LOD bias is shimmering of the graphics or textures or environment. So you be the judge and see what you think. In my personal opinion, there's nothing going on that's particularly distracting, disturbing or in any way breaking of the experience. In terms of the question, did it affect my in-game performance? I would have to say for the most part, no, maybe a tiny bit of additional stuttering. The next stage of this process is to compare the two extremes as promised of plus 16 and minus 16 using graphic pack LOD bias. So here we are using a graphic pack LOD bias of plus 16. And I do not know why you would choose this other than you have some very bizarre kind of fetish. During my tests, it had no performance benefits. It was purely visual. To contrast Play-Doh Land, here's what minus 16 looks like. And in my opinion, there is definitely a point of diminishing return where the textures have reached their limit and they can't give you anything more. If you're interested in playing with a level of detail setting, I will include my own graphic pack. You'll find that in the description below. It's titled TCG LOD Bias and it will come with a value of minus three. If you want to edit that, just open up the rules file and change the number from anything from minus 16 up to 16. One thing to note with the bias is that in NVIDIA control panel, you need to go down to texture filtering, negative LOD bias and set that to allow. If you'd be interested playing with the LOD using NVIDIA Profile Inspector, you'll also find that linked down below. Simply open it up, find CMU in the Profiles drop down, then go to Section 4 and where it says Texture Filtering LOD Bias, OGL, simply pick your value all the way from 0 to plus 3 to minus 3. And if you really want, you can type in your own value. This video took me far too long to make. So if you enjoyed it, leave that thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. And if you want to see more content from me, maybe consider subscribing.